الحمد لله رب العالمين له النعمة وله الفضل وله الثناء الحسن صلوات الله البر الرحيم والملائكة المقربين على سيدنا محمد الصادق الوعد الأمين وعلى آله وصحبه الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا اللهم لا سهل إلا ما جعلته سهلا وأنت يا حي يا قيوم يا قوي يا متين يا ذا الجلال والإكرام تجعل الحزن إذا شئت سهلا اللهم اجعل أعمالنا خالصة لوجهك الكريم Let's go over the 13 attributes of Allah tabarak wa ta'ala That's an appropriate lesson to have since it's part of the obligatory knowledge the personal obligatory knowledge of the religion now, not every detail that I'm going to mention is a personal obligation, but this is part of the obligatory knowledge. The 13 attributes of Allah are one, existence, al wujud. Abu Hanifa said, Wa huwa shay'un la kal ashya' wa ma'na shay'. إثباته بلا جسم ولا جوهر ولا عرض ولا حد له ولا ضد له ولا ند له ولا مثل له He said, he is something unlike the things. And the meaning of saying that he is something is the confirmation of his existence without a body. That is saying he's شيء means he exists. So the meaning of saying that he is something or a thing is the confirmation of his existence but without a body nor a particle. So he's not a body, that means he's not made of pieces, he's not constructed, nor a particle. So he's also existing without being the basic piece of a body without being the um, original piece of a body which is the particle because bodies are built or constructed from particles nor a quality also he's not a quality so he's not an attribute quality means attribute or characteristic Allah is not an attribute or a characteristic that means he's not something that cannot exist independently. He's not something that cannot exist independently. Because the attribute or the quality or the characteristic is something that does not exist independently. 
like a color. A color needs something to be attributed with it. A color cannot stand alone or a motion. Motion cannot stand alone. There must be a moving body or stillness. There must be a still body, but stillness itself cannot have an independent existence. That's the meaning of quality. We'll come back to talk about that, inshallah. Nor a limit. A limit means an edge. Nor an opposite. An opposite means a similar one who opposes him. Allah does not have one who is similar to him yet opposing him. That is, he does not have a contender. Nor a similar or a likeness. In explicitly stating his existence, An Nasafi said, Wal muhdithu lil alam huwa Allahu ta'ala. The one who made the world occur is Allah the Exalted. It means he exists. So even without using the word exist, without explicitly saying the word exist, he's saying Allah exists. What he's saying in this statement is that the world exists and Allah exists. He's telling you, this world exists and it didn't exist on its own. And so the one who made the world occur is also existing. And he is Allah the Exalted. The one who made the world occur, his name is Allah. But if you debate with a person like an atheist about the one who made the world occur, you don't have to say that his name is Allah. That's not a condition for the sake of the debate that you tell him that his name is Allah. Rather, you can refer to him as the creator, for example, or the one who made the world exist. That's because in the first place, the atheist doesn't agree with you that Allah exists. So it's one thing that you're trying to prove to him that God exists, and it's another thing on top of that if you're trying to tell him that God is Allah. So that's just a, a pointer for you if you're ever talking to one of those people. And especially if you're talking to one online and he doesn't know you're a Muslim, you don't have to actually say you're a Muslim. You can just argue for the existence of God. Why? Because if you tell him you're a Muslim from the beginning, he might know by your name. But if not, if you tell him you're a Muslim from the beginning, then he's going to just go to some somewhere else and slander the religion and slander the prophet and things like that, while your goal is to prove the existence of God. So stay focused. Allah says in the Quran, Afillahi shak, it means, is there a doubt in Allah? Which means, is there a doubt in the existence of Allah? Which means, there is no doubt in the existence of Allah. Which means, Allah exists for sure. The question is only rhetorical. Number two, eternity, al-qidam or al-azal. Al-Tahawi said, qadimum bilabtida, eternal without a beginning. That means Allah exists and his existence was not preceded by non-existence. The existence of Allah was not preceded by non-existence. And so he always existed eternally. And Allah says, Huwa al-awwal, which means he is the one who exists without a beginning. 
he is the first, which means he is the one who has no beginning for his existence. Number three, everlastingness, al-Baqa. Abu Hanifa said, لم يزل ولا يزال بأسمائه وصفاته الذاتية والفعلية which means he never ceased to be so he will always be existing non-existence does not occur to him and he shall not cease to be named with his names and attributed with his attributes of the self and his attributes of doings. We already said Allah has attributed with attributes of the self. And also Allah has attributed with attributes of doings, which is his creating. Allah creates. Allah is the one who creates life. Allah is the one who makes the living die. Allah is the one who grants the sustenance. Allah is the one who restricts the sustenance. Allah tabaraka wa ta'ala is the one who grants high status. Allah Ta'ala is the one who gives low status. Allah is the one who makes one die as a believer. Allah is the one who makes one die as a kafir, etc. Those are the attributes of doings. At-Tahawi said, Da'imun bilantiha, la yafna wa la yabid. Which means, He's everlasting without an end. He does not perish nor go out of existence. In this statement of Imam al Hawi, there's emphasis because he said the same thing three times. He said, Da'imun bilantiha. He's everlasting four times. Da'im, he's everlasting. Bilantiha, without an end. La yafna, he does not perish, wa la yabid, and he does not go out of existence. Da'imun bilantiha, la yafna, wa la yabid. Abu al Muzaffar said, wa an ta'lama an lahu baqa'a. Which means, and that you know that he has everlastingness. And Abu al-Mudhaffar, he's the author of Al-Tabsiru fi din which is a summary of Al-Farq Bain Al-Firaq. In that book, he has a section about the creed of Ahlu Sunnah wal Jama'ah. Maybe one day, inshallah, we can go over it. It's very beneficial and very beautiful. Allah says, Huwa al wal akhir he is the one who has no beginning for his existence, and he is the one who has no end for his existence. Number four, oneness, al-wahdaniyah. Abu Hanifa said, "Wallahu Taala wahidun la min tariq al-adad." وَلَكِنْ مِنْ طَرِيقِ أَنَّهُ لَا شَرِيكَ لَهُ Which means he is one. Allah, the exalted, is one. Not in the context of numbers, but in the context that he has no partner. Saying that he's one, not in the context of numbers, means that When something is one in the context of numbers, that does not negate that there is another like it. So, for example, I'm one person, but that's in the context of numbers because there's another person. And so Allah wa ta'ala is one, but not in the context of numbers because he has no partner.
Abdul Hawi said, نقول في توحيد الله معتقدين بتوفيق الله إن الله واحد لا شريك له. We say about the oneness of Allah with conviction by the success from Allah. Certainly Allah is one without a partner. And his statement here, بِتَوْفِيقِ by the success from Allah, the God-given success, he means by the power from Allah to do the good. The tawfiq is Allah creating in the slave the power to do good. Allah is the one who creates in the slave the power to do good and the one who creates in the slave the power to do evil. His creating in the slave the power to do good is called tawfiq. And his creating in the slave the power to do evil is called khidlan. And both of those refer back to his attribute of i'ana. His i'ana means his em empowering, his empowering, okay? So his i'ana, his empowering is more general because he empowers to do the good and he empowers to do the bad. If that i'ana was i'ana tun ala al khair, if it was empowering one to do good, then it's called tawfiq. And if it was i'anatun ala al empowering one to do bad, then it's called khidlan. Abu al-Mudhaffar said, وَأَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ خَالِقَ الْعَالَمْ وَأَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ خَالِقَ الْعَالَمْ وَاحِدِ And that you know that the creator of the world is one. Number five, life. Al Hayah Al Tahawi said, Hayun la yamut, alive, undying. Number six, Al Ilm, knowledge. Abu Hanifa said, وكان الله تعالى عالما في الأزل بالأشياء قبل كونها. In eternity, Allah the Exalted was knowledgeable about the things before their being, before they existed, before they came into existence. He was knowledgeable about them and he knew about them. Al-Tahawi said, خَلَقَ الْخَلْقَ بِعِلْمِهِ He created the creation in accordance with his knowledge. That means the things come into existence as he knew they would come into existence. Number seven, power. Al-Qudrah or al kuwa This attribute has both names. It may be called Al-Qudrah and it may be called al kuwa They both refer to the same attribute. Al-Tahawi said, Wala shay'a yu'ajizuh. Nothing disables him. That means nothing renders him weak. Number eight, al mashia or al irada. Those are both names for the same attribute. Al-Tahawi said, 
ولا يكون إلا ما يريد. Nothing will be except what he wills. And Nasafi said, "Wal irada tu sifatun lillahi taala azaliyatun qaimatun bidatihi taala." When we say that nothing happens except by the will of Allah, then this is a confession to destiny. And that's why Imam al-Shafi'i, when he was asked about destiny, al-Qadr, he defined it as the will of Allah. Al-Qadr is the will of Allah. Destiny is the will of Allah. Meaning destiny as an attribute of Allah. Destining. It is the will of Allah. Tabaraka wa ta'ala. Nine. Sight. Al-Basar. Ten. Hearing. As-Sama'. Al-Tuhawi said. ذلك ذلك بأنه على كل شيء قدير وكل شيء إليه فقير وكل أمر عليه يسير لا يحتاج إلى شيء ليس كمثله شيء وهو السميع البصير which means that is because he is powerful over every possible thing. Everything is in need of him. Every matter is easy for him. Then he quoted the ayah from the Quran. لَيْسَ كَمِثْلِهِ شَيْءٍ وَهُوَ السَّمِيعُ الْبَصِيرُ Which means he does not resemble anything and he is all hearing, all seeing. Abu al-Muzaffar said, وَأَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ لَهُ حَيَاةً وَقُدْرَةً وَعِلْمًا وَإِرَادَةً وَكَلَامًا وَسَمْعًا وَبَصَرًا And that you know that he has life, power, knowledge, will, speech, hearing, and sight. And Nasafi said, الواحد القديم الحي القادر العليم السميع البصير الشاء المريد The one, the eternal, the living, the powerful, the knowledgeable, the hearing, the seeing, the willing. Now there's a number of points here. Just back up a little bit. So, Imam al tahawi he said, ذَلِكَ بِأَنَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٍ And in the translation we said, that is because he is powerful over every possible thing. We put possible in parentheses. Because this is the creed of Ahlul Sunnah wal Jama'ah that the power of Allah is related to the possible things. The power of Allah is not related to what is impossible. We Ahlu Sunnah, the Sunni Muslims said, there are matters that are impossible, such as a partner for God that's impossible such as for God to be weak or ignorant that's impossible his power is not related to what's impossible because the impossible does not come into existence and by his power he brings the non-existent into existence. 
He raises the existent thing from nothing by his power. And the impossible does not come into being because it's impossible. By definition, it wouldn't happen. It's impossible. So the power of Allah is not related to it. Also, the power of Allah is not related to what is necessary. And the necessary is the existence of God himself. Allah's existence is necessary. God must exist. His existence is necessary. Since his existence is necessary, that means non-existence does not apply. And if non-existence does not does not apply, then his power is not related to himself. His power is not related to what's necessary. Why? Because by his power, he raises the existent thing from nothing, from non-existence. As for his own existence, it is necessary, confirmed in eternity. Non-existence does not apply to him. And so his own power does not apply to him. He is attributed with power and he's not a subject of his own power. And the impossible is not a subject of his power because the impossible does not come into existence. So his power is related to anything possible. Anything that's possible, Allah has power over it. Here in this statement, Abu al-Muzaffar said, وَأَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ لَهُ حَيَاةً وَقُدْرَةً وَعِلْمًا وَإِرَادَةً وَكَلَامًا وَسَمْعًا وَبَصَرًا And that you know that he has life, power, knowledge, will, speech, hearing, and sight. This is a confirmation of Allah's attributes. So Allah wa ta'ala is attributed with attributes. And as for Imam an nasafis statement here, Al-Wahid Al-Qadim Al-Hayy Al-Qadir Al-Alim Al-Sami' Al-Basir Al-Sha'i Al-Murid The one, the eternal, the living, the powerful, the knowledgeable, the hearing, the seeing, the willing. This is a confirmation of his name. In Arabic, that is. Al-Wahid is the name of Allah. I'm not claiming that all these expressions in English are names of Allah. A name of Allah is, is something by which you can call Allah. Like you say, Ya Allah. Oh Allah. You say, for example, Ya Wahid. Oh the one. But in English, you don't say, Oh the one. For example, or you don't say O oh, one. For example, wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. So that's why we don't say that those are names of Allah. You can say Ya Qadim, Ya Hai, Ya Qadir, Ya Alim, Ya Samir. Ya Basir. And you don't say, yeah, oh, powerful, oh, knowledgeable, for example. But you do say in English, oh, God, it works. That's the name of the Creator. God is the name of the Creator. And you do say in English, oh, Lord. Now as for Ash-Sha'i and Al-Murid, as an nasafi mentioned, those were not listed uh, in the names of Allah that came from the Prophet ﷺ. It's not confirmed from the Prophet ﷺ that he referred to Allah as Ash-Sha'i 
or al murid so then is it permissible actually to refer to Allah as such as as shai or al murid when it didn't come as a name of Allah in the Quran or in the hadith What's correct and strong is that it is not permissible to name Allah with any name that he didn't name himself or that the Prophet didn't name him. And this is the position of Al-Ash'ari. That's the supported position. That we don't give Allah a name or an attribute that he didn't name himself or attribute to himself or the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam didn't give to Allah he didn't name Allah by that name even if it came from a companion even if a companion said a name gave Allah a name that Allah didn't give himself and the Prophet didn't give to him what's correct is that it is not taken or an attribute, a name or an attribute. So if someone might say, but, but, isn't it mentioned in the Quran that Allah has will and that Allah, yeah, that Allah has will? So what's the problem? Ashai al murid It can be said that according to the saying that it is not permissible to name Allah with a name that he didn't name himself then even if a verb is mentioned in the Quran for example we stick to the verb and then we don't turn it into a name also so yes Allah says inna Allah yaf'alu ma yasha Allah does whatever he wills yasha and linguistically, the one who does the verb, sha'a, who does this verb, sha'a, then he's called a sha'i. But that didn't come as a name of Allah. And Allah says, Inna Allah yaf'alu ma yurid. Yurid. He does whatever he wills. That's the verb. But al-murid didn't come as a name of Allah. And that's a long issue and uh, a lesson in itself. We're just touching on it. So know that. that that's an issue that we're not going to go further now. We're just going to keep it simple for tonight, inshallah. Number 11, speech, al-kalam. Al-Tahawi said, وَإِنَّ الْقُرْآنَ كَلَامُ اللَّهِ Which means, certainly the Qur'an is the name of the speech of Allah. With the word, the name of, in brackets. Literally, his statement says, certainly the Qur'an is the speech of Allah. And we put in English, in the brackets, the name of. Because this is the meaning of his statement, that the speech of Allah is called Al-Qur'an. The speech of Allah, which is his attribute, the attribute of his self. We're talking about the attributes of the self of Allah. The speech of Allah, which is his attribute, has a name. It's called Al-Qur'an. Then what about the book, the revealed expressions? Isn't that also called Al-Qur'an? Yes, that's also called Al-Qur'an.
but meaning that it refers to Al-Qur'an. The revealed expressions were called Al-Qur'an because they refer to Al-Qur'an. And what's Al-Qur'an? The speech of Allah. It was called Al-Qur'an because it refers to Al-Qur'an. And that's normal. Naming something after what it refers to is normal. As simple as drawing a stick figure on the board and putting a name under it. So for example, if someone drew a stick figure on the board and he wrote under it, Ra'id. What is he saying or what is he doing here? He's saying, this stick figure refers to Ra'id and therefore I'm naming it Ra'id. He's saying, if someone were to ask him, who's that? He would say, that's Ra'id. So it's normal to name something after what it refers to. If you had a model of a Lamborghini, a handheld model, it's perfectly normal to say, this is a Lamborghini. Or if you had a photograph of your mother, it's perfectly normal for you to say, this is my, this is my mother. So the revealed expressions, because they refer to the Qur'an, then they were called the Qur'an. Is that clear? Therefore, Al-Qur'an has two usages. The original usage, the first religious usage for the word Al-Qur'an is the speech of Allah. The second usage for the word Al-Qur'an is the revealed expressions. And those revealed expressions were called Al-Qur'an because of what they refer to. Is that clear? Any question about that? So it doesn't mean Allah speaks Arabic. He doesn't speak Arabic. Just like I'm not a stick figure. I'm far from a stick figure. May Allah make me a little closer to being a stick figure. Amen. Just a little. The speech of Allah is not letters and sounds, as we're going to mention here. Abu al-Muzaffar said, وَأَن تَعْلَمَ أَنَّ كَلَامَ اللَّهِ تَعَالَى لَيْسَ بِحَرْفٍ وَلَا صَوْتٍ And that you know that the speech of Allah is not a letter and not a sound. Question. So is it correct to say that Allah created sounds that Jibreel conveyed to Rasulullah, 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 sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, it is, it is, it is valid to say that. It is valid to say that. It is valid to say that Allah, tabaraka wa ta'ala, created a recitation of the Qur'an for Jibreel to hear. And so he heard the Qur'an. And also he saw it written in the guarded tablet. And so he took what he heard and saw and taught it to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But there are several invalid sayings that should not be said. It should not be said that Allah recited the Quran to Jibreel. And it should not be said that Allah spoke to Jibreel 
with his uncreated speech, so it's not Arabic, and and he made Jibreel understand the Quran, and then Jibreel came down and told it to Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, according to the words we know. What's wrong with that? What's wrong with that is that it's saying, according to that, it means that the 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 revealed expressions are the composition of the angel. If someone says, well, Allah spoke to Jibreel with his uncreated speech. If someone says, yes, it's true, Allah has the uncreated speech, he didn't speak Arabic. Yes, that's true. He spoke to Jibreel with his uncreated speech, and Jibreel understood from his uncreated speech, the Qur'an, and went down and taught it to Muhammad. This is wrong saying. Why? Not because, we're not saying it's wrong that Jibreel hears the uncreated speech. No, that's not wrong. It's wrong to say that Allah spoke the Qur'an to Jibreel with his uncreated speech, and then Jibreel understood from that uncreated speech the Qur'an, and then expressed it with his own words to the Prophet ﷺ. That's invalid because that makes the revealed expressions the composition of the angel. And that's kufr. So both of those are kufr. To say that Allah recited the Qur'an to Jibreel, that's kufr. Because that's saying Allah speaks Arabic. And to say that Allah spoke the Qur'an to Jibreel by his uncreated speech, and then Jibreel taught Muhammad his understanding. So he composed those letters and sounds of the Qur'an that we know today. That's kufr too, because that makes the Qur'an, that makes the text of the Qur'an, the composition of the creature. So it, it's valid to say that Allah created for Jibreel a recitation of the Qur'an that he heard. And he also saw the Qur'an written in the guarded tablet. And he taught Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam what he heard and saw. Question, what is linguistic meaning of Qur'an? Al-Qur'an linguistically means Al-Qawl. That is, Al-Qur'an is Sifatu Al-Mutakallim, is, is the attribute of the speaker, meaning. Qur'an is, is a masdar of Qara'a Yaqra'u. You call Qara'a Yaqra'u Qur'anan, Qara'a Yaqra'u Qira'atan wa Qur'anan. Qara'a Yaqra'u Qira'atan wa Qur'anan. So Qur'an is a masdar for Qara'a yaqra'u. Qara'a, which means literally to, to recite or to read. That is, the Qur'an is the speech of the one who spoke. That's what it means. The Qur'an is the speech of the one who spoke. So from this meaning, Allah's attribute is called Al-Qur'an. Question, the letters and sounds are created, but the meanings and the attribute it refers to is uncreated? Say, the letters and sounds are created and what it refers to is not created, which is the uncreated speech of Allah. And, and stop there. And the word meaning, just scratch it out. The speech of Allah Ta'ala is not created. And, and don't go further. Number 12. Independence or absolute independence, Al Qiyamu bin Nafs. Abu al Mudaffar said, 
وأن تعلم أن البارئ سبحانه وتعالى لا يجوز وصفه بالحاجة and that you know that it is invalid to ascribe the Creator the glorified and exalted with need so Allah does not need anything Al-Tahawi said لا يحتاج إلى شيء he does not need anything. And 13, dissimilarity to the occurrences. Al Mukhalafatu lil Hawadith. Abu al Muzaffar said, Wa an ta'lama anna kullama dalla ala huduthi shay'in min al haddi wal nihayati wal makani wal jiha wal sukuni wal harakati fahuwa mustahilun alayhi subhanahu wa ta'ala li anna ma la yakunu ma la yakunu muhdathan la yajuzu alayhi ma huwa dalilun ala al huduth he said, and that you know, that everything that indicates that something is an occurrence. Occurrence means something that happens, an event. In other words, a creation, such as edge, limit, place, direction, stillness, and motion is all impossible to be attributed to him, the glorified and exalted. For whatever is not an occurrence could not validly have the indications of occurring. Uh, looks like a piece is missing from the Arabic text. So he said, and that you know, this is a good statement here, and that you know that everything that indicates that something is an occurrence, yani everything that proves that something is created, such as an edge, because if something has an edge, then why does it have edges like that and not other edges? Look at the edges of a crab, for example, as opposed to the edges of a... Uh, shark why does it have those edges and not other edges or the edge the edges of a lobster why does it have those edges and not other edges and limit why does it have those limits and not other limits and place why is it in that place and not another place why i'm in america i'm not in china for example i'm not in new guinea in the jungle somewhere. I didn't put myself here. I didn't prevent myself from being there. Place, direction, stillness, and motion. All of that is proof that whatever has it is created. So in that you know that everything that indicates that something is an occurrence, such as edge, limit, place, direction, stillness, and motion, is all impossible to be attributed to him. And Wahhabis and those who liken Allah to the creation, they don't understand the statement. It doesn't go into their heads. They don't conceive its meaning. They don't see what's wrong with it. When they read that, they say, well, what is this guy talking about? For whatever is not an occurrence could not pop, could not validly have the indications of occurring. It means if something is not created, then it would not have created attributes. It wouldn't have any of the attributes of a creation if it's not created. At Tahawi said, "Wala shay amithlah." Nothing is like him.
Those are the 13 attributes of Allah Tabaraka wa Ta'ala. It is impossible that Allah would be attributed with the opposite of these attributes because of what is confirmed by the intellect and the texts of the religion. So let's take a quick look. What are the opposites of these attributes? What's the opposite of existence? Whoa, you're sleepy tonight, brothers and sisters, eh? Non-existence, so that's impossible for Allah. What's the opposite of being eternal? Eternity. Having a beginning, yes. Uh, having a beginning. Having a beginning is a better word here for a reason. Uh, what's the opposite of everlastingness? Ending, having an end, yes. Um, so that's all impossible for Allah. As for the word finite, yeah. That's impossible. It's impossible that Allah would be finite. But I think the word finite includes both or either having a beginning or having an end. So when we ask what's the opposite of being eternal, it would be being created, having a beginning specifically. And what's the opposite of being everlasting? It would be having an end. which both of those are being finite. Um, what's the opposite of dissimilarity? Resemblance. What's the opposite of independence? Dependence, or in other words, neediness. Yes, being in need. What's the opposite of oneness? Multiplicity, yes being many, or being more than one, or having a partner. What's the opposite of life? Death. What's the opposite of knowledge? Ignorance. What's the opposite of power? Weakness. What's the opposite of will? <laughs> Compulsion. Which indicates weakness also. What's the opposite of sight? Blindness. Yes, what's the opposite of hearing? Deafness, correct. What's the opposite of speech or speaking? Muteness. There's also another word. Now the word silence, I'm reluctant about the word silence because in my understanding, the opposite of silence is sound or noise. Yes, dumb, being dumb. 
So the opposite of speaking is being mute or being dumb. Being dumb doesn't mean being stupid. It means not speaking. Or not being attributed with speech. Okay. So, it is impossible that Allah would be attributed with the opposites of these attributes because of what is confirmed by the intellect and the texts of the religion. These 13 attributes can be derived from Surah Al-Ikhlas, as seen in the talk of Imam Abdullah ibn Ahmad al nasafi in his book of interpretation, Madarik al-Tanzil wa Haqaiq al-Ta'wil, or famously called the Tafsir of the nasafi and he's different from the Nesafi that we've been quoting all this time. When we refer to those 13 attributes, that's a different Nesafi.